I released a video recently on how we could take AI tools like ChatGPT and Sora, combine those with a tool like Designer, which is an online way of being able to easily repurpose content. In our example, we took a blog post and turned it into an ebook. We then took that, used it as a lead magnet, created some images and things to go alongside it. And then we used OmniSend to set up a simple pop-up where people could sign up, get them onto our mailing list, and we would send them that ebook. Today, we're going to take that to another level. We're going to see how we can set up an email sequence that'll go hand in hand with what we've already set up. This email sequence is going to be fully automated. So once you set it up, it's hands off. Once someone signs up, they automatically get put into that sequence and it all taken care of behind the scenes. So let's take a look at how we're going to create all of this. So where we left off in the first video, and if you haven't seen that link in the description below and also here right now, go and check it out. It's a good video. We left it off by having our pop-up and everything in place so they could sign up to our mailing list. Then we sort of take a quick look at how you could automate things. But now I want to go into more detail and show you exactly how you can set this up for yourself. So the first thing we're going to need to do is have an email sequence. Now you could obviously write this yourself, but if you're doing this for a client and you don't necessarily have a client that is that comfortable doing this kind of thing, we could simply turn to a tool like ChatGPT and get that to help us out. If you're doing it for yourself, again, you could simply use this as a starting point to brainstorm and tweak it accordingly. But for example, we're simply going to use ChatGPT, so we've got the content there. So I've already got a prompt, so I'm going to paste that in. I would basically tell it as a professional copywriter, and we're telling it what we wanted to do, where we actually wanted to take the information from for the sequence. So you can see I dropped the URL inside here. This is the same URL that we use to create that ebook. So it's going to look at that information. It's going to have context that's going to be related to the particular ebook that we're sending out as a lead magnet, and then create this six email sequence for us. So we'll just click to actually start this off. We'll let ChatGPT do its work. And like I say, if you want to tweak things, you absolutely can do. So after a few moments, we now have our six step email sequence, starting off with the email that's the kind of welcome on board link to the download file. You kind of get the idea. Now, speaking of the download file, what I would recommend you do is use a service like Dropbox. You can easily just upload your file to a completely free Dropbox account, get a shareable link and use that inside your email sequence. There's lots of benefits on why you want to do this over hosting it yourself. But if you want to host it yourself, you absolutely can do. You can also use something like Bunny CDN and use their storage facilities if you want. And like I say, create a shared link up to you how you want to go and tackle that. So now we have our email sequence all written out. We next need to go into OmniSend and start working on, first of all, tagging our users. Then we're going to see how we set up automations and we can have this whole process up and running super quickly. Now, OmniSend have sponsored this portion of the video, but as always with any sponsored content, I'm not going to give you an opinion. I'm going to demonstrate how you can use these features and you can make a more informed decision for yourself. Okay, so let's move on. First up, let's head over into our forms. We're going to come to the form section. There's our sign up and lead magnet we created in the previous video. Let's come in and edit this. Now we're inside our pop up. And the first thing we're going to need to do now to expand upon what we covered in the previous video is use a tag to identify where anybody in our list has come from. So if someone uses this particular pop up, we want to tag them to say this is where they've come from. We can then use those tags later on as part of our overall automation. Now you could use things like segments and things like that, but I find tags are really useful. We can tag people and untag them afterwards. So let's take a look. We've got our pop-up open, so we're going to come over to our audience management on the right-hand side. And inside here, we've got the first option for tags. So you can click and you can see we've got a range of different tags that I've created previously. If you don't have a tag here, you can see start typing. It will create that for you, and then you can choose to apply that to this particular pop-up or any future ones. I've already created one called Tips Lead Magnet, so we go to select that. Come back out of audience, and if you want to set anything else up inside here, you absolutely can do. And then we've got our sequence, which is our form. You can see in front of us our success message, which is thanks for signing up, and then the subscribe. So if somebody's already subscribed, it'll tell them they are. Once they go through this process, they will then be added into our mailing list. Let's update this. And now we've updated our pop up ready to be able to work with those tags. So the next thing we're going to do is pop into automation. So inside the automation, you can see I've already started working on one, but let's create one from scratch anyway. Let's create a new workflow. You can see we can search for previous ones that are sort of being created, but we're going to say we want to start from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a name. So we'll call this lead magnet number one tips. We'll update this. 
Now we've given it a name so we can easily identify any or all of the automations. So now we need to define how a person actually enters this particular automated workflow. So to do that, we're going to come over to our triggers. And if we open this up, you can see we've got a bunch of different options, things like click message, ended segment, and so on. For our example, we're going to come down and we say subscribed to marketing. Now, once you've got that, it's a customer at this floor when they subscribe to marketing. Now we want to filter that list based upon the tag we've just applied. So to do that, we're going to come down to our audience filters, expand this out and say audience filter option, open this up, choose a tag. As you can see, there's other options here as well. But for our example, tag is what we want. And we say tag is, and we're going to say tips lead magnet and click save. So now we set up two conditions. They have to be subscribed to marketing and they have to be tagged with the tips lead magnet. Then they will enter this workflow. You can set up other things inside here if you want to, things like exit conditions. But for this example, we just want to have them go through this entire flow, regardless of whether they can sort of opt out and jump into different parts of it and things like that. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to send them our first welcome email, which has the link to our particular lead magnet. So to do that, we're going to drop in an email. We can click on this. Now we can see we've got options for our subject line, pre-header, sender's name, and so on. So if we come back into our chat GPT, you can see there's our first welcome and deliver guide. So your tender terminology cheat sheet is here. We'll copy that from here, head over back into OmniSend and pop in our subject line. Now pre-header, if we want to, we can simply use AI here. So we can click on this and say, let's go and see what we've got. There we go. Let's just say we choose that one. So we'll choose, we've now got a pre-header. If you want to add some personalization into your subject titles, you can absolutely do that. So we could say first name. And you also say that if they don't include their first name, what do you want to use in its place? So we'll just say there and say insert. So now we can just change this and say, hi, Paul, hi, John, hi, Debbie, whatever you want. And if they haven't included the name, say hi there. So it's kind of still not personalized, but it's a little bit less generic. So you can see, we can just quickly adjust anything we have on here. If you want to add any emojis in, you can do that as well. Sender's name, we'll pop in the company's name or the person's name, whatever you want. We'll leave the sender's email address. This is something that you have as part of the free account. Obviously, if you have a paid account, you have more options here. Then we've got the option to edit our content. So if we click on edit content, this will ask us to save it. So we'll say, yes, please save it. We don't lose that work. And that'll take us over now into the editor where we can start setting things up. Now I've already uploaded my kind of brand guide for this particular project for the client. And as you can see, that automatically pulls it in for us. We've also got the unsubscribe option and information underneath, which by legal terms, you have to have this on there. And this again, will pull the information in from what you put in when you set up your free account or your paid account with OmniSend. So I don't want to worry too much about these drop quick items. Let's get rid of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop in our email body. But you can easily pop in things like a hero image, product listings. So if you're selling products, you could do that here. We're going to keep this super simple. We want an email body. We want with a title and a button, some content. This looks good. We'll drag this into place. We've now got our basic info inside there. So now what we can do is we can easily come over into ChatGPT and we can grab our content. So I just got to insert that content, tweak the styling and everything else, and we have most of what we need in place. Let's get rid of this little placeholder, which does not work inside here. We've got to put the correct format in, remove that. We'll come over then to our formatting options. And the last one is to insert personalization tags. Click on there and say first name. Again, we've got that same option. So we'll say there and say insert. So now it'll say hi, Paul, hi there, whatever the option is. There's all the relevant text. The final thing we're going to need to do is select our button, change this over. We'll say download your free ebook. Then you can drop in your link. So like I said, this is where you'd probably use that one from something like Dropbox or something. I'm just going to simply pop in a placeholder for now. There we go. You can set your button style if you want. You've got primary, secondary, and tertiary. So you can see they're all styled up differently. And again, you have full control over this. I'm going to need my primary in because it kind of picks up my brand colors. Set this to full so you can't miss it. So there's our button. There's everything else in place. So now we're happy with all of that. We can click on Finish Editing. And that now has created our first email in the sequence. So with everything in place, we can now move on to the second one. So for this now, we're going to simply come in, drop a delay inside here, set this to be something like three days. We don't want to bombard them with emails. We want to nurture them, not actually pee them off. And we're going to say 
three days and say send on selected days of the week so we don't want to target weekends so you can see monday through friday ignoring saturday and sunday that's awesome so once you've done that we can update this and then we can carry on moving on to the next one which would be to put another email in and carry on doing this process until we've got all six emails in place and the whole point of these emails is that each one adds value over the lead magnet you've created for them so each time you want to give them something a little more so they get value they start to trust you and you get that kind of no like and trust once you kind of get there once you've done something maybe five or six emails then maybe move forward with one offer an offer that is generally a paid service you've warmed them up they like what you're offering you offer them something paid there's a better chance of actually converting them if you want to do things like testing out an offer versus no offer you can easily use things like splits or a b testing so for example let's just say we pull an a b test in and this now allows us to create different options. We can send an email out that has one particular message in there that doesn't have an upsell or a sale item kind of thing, and another one that does include it. Then you can test and see the reactions and you can make decisions from that point. So you can easily, like I say, just drop in an email, drop in another email, and you can choose which option works best. And like I say, you can then do other things from there. So by using these workflows, you can easily be able to create email sequences. If you're not good at writing them or you want to do them for a client, use a tool like ChatGPT to at least get the ball rolling, get approval then from the client, modify as needed, and you have everything you need in place. Now you may be thinking, Paul, how can we actually monetize this with clients? Well, there's lots of different ways. Let me give you a couple of examples just to kind of whet your appetite and hopefully you can then see the benefits of using something like this. So first of all, let's say you've got an e-commerce client. The most important thing there is to not generally find new customers, although that is nice. It's to nurture and get customers that we've already sold to to come back and buy more. It's much easier to convert an existing customer than it is to find a new one. The ROI can be a lot higher on those existing customers. So using things like this is a great way of being able to keep in touch, keep yourself top of mind. Consider Amazon. If you've ever bought anything on Amazon, you'll know you get emails with recommendations and all those kinds of things. Use this to do something like that. You've also got that options. Let's say you've got a client that much the same as what I'm talking about here, they release content on their website on a regular basis, maybe weekly, fortnightly, monthly, maybe raw regular. Well, there's lots of times that could be repurposed in various different ways. Like we've seen in the previous video and here, you can take that content and you can easily convert that into something else, use it as a lead magnet, get them into your mailing list, start contacting them, keeping them up to date with information, and over that period of time, warm them up and sell to them as you go through that process. Add value, they're more likely to purchase from you or your client. But most clients wouldn't be comfortable doing this kind of thing. So you can set this up and you can create multiple different automations, create multiple different lead magnets and set up the automations to go afterwards and all those kinds of things. Manage that overall email marketing platform. So sell them that service. There's so many different ways in which you can approach this and use this. But hopefully what this video has demonstrated is how we can use different tools alongside the previous video to be able to offer this kind of service confidently and competently. But as always, I do welcome your feedback. Do you do anything like this? Has this given you ideas on how you could approach this for yourself or your clients in the future? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to save a nice 30% on your first three months with OmniSend, if you want to go for a paid plan, link in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.